Hello out there, Serial Processing Universe. My name is Adam Okada with Beyond Clean, and you're watching another episode of The Mailbag. Uh, our question today is going to be on AirPods in uh, the sterile processing area. So let me re go ahead and read the question. This is from Roxana. Um, I enjoy listening to the podcast with all the great casts, uh, and I have a great subject that maybe Beyond Clean can help with. Uh, should any AirPods or any type of earphones be allowed to be worn on one ear in SPD? Should they be worn on either the clean side or in the decontamination room? Uh, please help. Do you have any information that could help? So mm -hmm. I guess I'll throw it to you guys and see if you guys have any uh, answers to that question. All right, Mike, jump in there. <laughs> you told right, us before so, the show that you had a controversial opinion. So. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Like, I worked for a time as an infection preventionist, uh, you know, just in a limited capacity. And so I, I totally understand where people are coming from when they say that represents a cross-contamination risk because you're taking something from the dirty side that has been on your person and then taking it into the clean side and i would agree with you 100 percent. you are correct uh, however at the same time i can also tell you that as a sterile processing technician i had a lot of bad nights in decontam and the only reason i survived i am convinced the only reason I survived those nights was because of audiobooks and podcasts. Uh, so I do not want to be dismissive and say, you know, uh, no, they shouldn't be allowed because uh, the cross contamination risk. Uh, I, I honestly, like I said, I believe I would not have made it as a sterile processing technician without being able to distract my mind occasionally with something that kind of fed the brain. And uh, I guarantee there's a lot of technicians who feel the exact same way. And I know that we love very easy rules because very easy rules are easy to enforce. So everybody wants a clean yes or no, the end. Right. But this is one of those things where there's got to be some nuance to the discussion. Uh, because if you take that away, I believe you are hurting the technicians. So, Mike, let's kind of line out a couple of details on what you just said. So you alluded to this, but I'm going to come out and say it. There's not any written standard or requirement that says you can't have AirPods in your decontamination area or on the clean side. Is that, that is correct? correct. That is okay. correct. There is no standard. <laughs> All right. So when you say nuance, you know, that's where the nuance is, and that's where, you know, maybe change the phrase that's where the common sense is for right. his question now lisa you've done a lot of work especially here recently on the topic of decontamination uh, cross-contamination and the one-way workflow so mike brought this up a little bit you know but he said it's obvious that it could pose a problem because of everything else that we know about how contamination happens in our space and in particular in our flow. So what's your opinion just kind of with that context in mind? Yeah. So I think that a lot of managers don't necessarily want to fight this battle because it's such a staff satisfier mm -hmm. and so have kind of that underlying um, discrepancy of knowing that there's a cross contamination risk and then also being able to provide um, like Mike was saying, the opportunities for uh, technicians to be able to have something uh, pleasant, to, you know, to listen to and kind of get through the day. Like my so, voice, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> what is more so, pleasant than a Beyond <laughs> Clean podcast? Uh, please tell me. Well, one, Obviously. Thing that, one thing that we did um, at a facility I worked at, my manager um, recognized this, hmm. and she provided... Um, Bluetooth speakers that were dedicated to the Deacon Tam and um, also for the uh, Deacon Tam area for our flexible endoscope area. And, um, you know, we also had a stereo system um, in the actual prep and pack area. So we had, um, we had provisions for people to be able to um, hook up their cell phone directly to the Bluetooth. And that was in, we had like this sub room for people to walk in and change. Not every department has that, but they were able to put their phone in their uh, jacket pocket in that clean space. 
and it never entered the dirty area. So um, I've also seen other places where, you know, folks have their earbuds in and they um, are working at a table with instruments and they set their headphone, you know, they set them down on their workstation among the, the instruments. And you just know they're going to get an ear infection because, you know, it's like grazing mm -hmm. everything else that, that those instruments have touched. So mm. plus their hands if they're not wearing gloves, right? So, um, yeah, I think that just increased awareness of um, what the risks are and then having those conversations in the, the department, you know, making the, the decisions that are best for everyone. So, yeah, and I really like that answer, Lisa, because it gets at kind of what the heart, I, I think, of a lot of these mailbag questions is where we really we've got to understand that in our industry, there is nuance, right? There are things that really have to be unpacked and thought through. And if you say, I want yes or no, you're going to miss something a lot of times. Right. Right. Well, and the good news about that, that nuance is if you do some research and you do the risk assessment, you know, for instance, if you want to go that route, you know, for this question and say, well, we know that there's all kinds of cross-contamination risk already in decontam, right? So like, we're not even talking about the papers that go back to decontam mm -hmm. that also go through the pass-through window and any number of other things that come in and out of that area that are not going through a clean room type, um, like decontamination spray, <laughs> right? We're coming in and out all the time. Now there's red lines in most places, but many places still today, there's not even a red line in decontam. So folks can come all the way in where the work is happening. But part of this question too, and I think Lisa, like you alluded to this, it's not just the question on the dirty side. They're also asking, uh, can we wear them on the clean side? And if so, what's the process? And the point that you brought up, even though we call it the clean side, there's still contamination likely in that area. You wouldn't want to eat your lunch on your, uh, like on your prep and pack table, right? Um, and why is that? If it's so clean, why would you not want to do that? Well, because we know the huge difference between something that's clean and something that's sterile, right? And that's not the topic of this conversation, but um, I don't want to leave us at this question though without giving a um, practical solution so let's say this person or this manager says i want to do it i want to find a way to do it as safely as possible to allow my folks uh, to wear their airpods what's the process like how should they be thinking about this should they be requiring disinfection wipe downs of the devices in and out like lisa i think your solution about that kind of clean room anti-room um, prior to going into decontam is a good step if you're using Bluetooth speakers, but what about the AirPods? Like, is there a reasonable workflow for this? And Adam, I don't know if you want to weigh in on that too. Um, I mean, I agree that, you know, it's, it's a definite contamination risk if you're going to bring any kind of electronics into that area. Um, and even on the clean side, you're posing a risk. I think the, the other thing that we're not really talking about is that a lot of people just want to do it to zone out. So they're not really, present in the moment in sterile processing. <laughs> um, and that can be tricky too. I mean, it's good as uh, good to have like background noise and to have something mm -hmm. to help the day go a little bit quicker. It's bad if you're not focusing on the thing that you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. So inspection, uh, decontamination. So that's why I'm always a little bit hesitant um, to say, especially if people want both ears to have headphones in. Um, that to me is a little bit much because we want them to be present. We want them to hear the phone if it goes. We want them to hear if there's something that's going wrong with a sterilizer or something. So, um, mm. you know, I think that part's interesting. And then I think uh, the solution, uh, like Lisa said, is, you know, have something that's available that everyone can kind of share and listen to. I know what we used to do is we used to take turns when we were in the department about who got to, the, to take the radio that day or to take it for like until lunchtime, then somebody else got it after lunch. So there's solutions that can be had. You can still have that kind of background noise that makes the day go quicker, uh, but it's not so distracting that it takes you away from the position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is a great opportunity to involve everybody, do some education about the risk and why we need to have this conversation, uh, and then really involve everyone in coming up with a solution that we can all agree on 
that meets that cross-contamination risk while also providing, uh, you know, that mental relief for an exhausting job. Uh, you know, and so if we're we're talking about wireless earbuds, for example, I, I think it's reasonable that uh, your hair covering would cover your ear as well, uh, you know, and that would be thus covering that ear pod uh, or that air pod or whatever, you know, it, it's called. Uh, so there are solutions that that kind of serve both. But I think the key is helping under helping everyone understand the why be behind everything or else it kind of just sounds like you're making up rules arbitrarily. Right. right. There, I do have one more little thing to add to sure. this conversation. You know, women or we'll just say anybody isn't really supposed to wear earrings, you know, when mm -hmm. they're in the department, just because of the risk of, I've seen it happen so many times where the back comes off and it can fall into a tray. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's those kind of, risks as well. I've, I have literally seen um, pocket change from somebody's scrub pocket end up in a tray um, or like a breath mint. And I'm not even kidding you. I'm still <laughs> the wrapper wow. <laughs> and, and on the field. <laughs> right. So um, I think that it's more than just the conversation of uh, contamination risks, right? It's, it's about, you know, is it okay to have something that could potentially be a foreign object hmm. as well? Right, right. Well, uh, as we like to do here at Beyond Clean, we like to encourage critical thinking and innovation. So if you're not happy with the answers that you just heard on this mailbag <laughs> episode, uh, I want you to take it as a challenge. You know, mm -hmm. if there's not a solution out there, that, if there's not an option out there that you're happy with, uh, do some thinking, do some networking on your own and start working toward that solution. And if there's a large enough market for it, not only in sterile processing, because we're not the only industry that has these requirements and concerns around cross contamination, you really could be on to a, a cool product, cool innovation, cool solution out there that, uh, that could really grow. So I hope you were encouraged by this conversation. Thank you for tuning in again to the Beyond Clean Mailbag series and if you have more questions or topics you want this team to cover, please email us at info at beyondclean.net. Until next time, keep fighting dirty. <laughs>